Last night, you had the opportunity to hear from our guest, who is a critically acclaimed national security analyst. His latest work, Putin's Crusade Against Pro-Western Christianity. I've posted it, just posted it on the Facebook. So you can go to the Facebook page of Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Yes, I call it the Facebook page. I'm sort of old-fashioned that way. And that said, we welcome our good friend Ryan Morrow. Go to the Facebook page, though, American Family Radio, nothingbuttruth.com. You can go to ryanmorrow.com, learn more about Ryan and his outstanding work. He's been ahead of the game and for the years I've known him, which I think is coming close to a decade now. Welcome back, Ryan. Great to be with you. Hey, thanks for having me back. What What do you make of the most recent events with a seemingly more aggressive Vladimir Putin, or at least forces engaging, trying to destabilize the Ukraine, elements of violence there, and our response currently, which seems to be 600 troops, if I'm not mistaken, to surrounding countries and NATO countries. Pardon me. I think everyone understands that Putin wants to restore Mother Russia, the greatness of Russia. Uh, some people say he wants to restore the Soviet Union because he says the collapse of the Soviet Union was the greatest geopolitical disaster of the century. I don't think that's the case. I think when you look at Putin's personality and what drives him, he is a Christian, even if I disagree with his theology and virtually everything he does. And he believes that Russia's original greatness did not come from communism, but it came from ethnic unity, having all Russians within a single state, including those that now live outside of Russia's borders, and secondly, and most importantly, the establishment of the Russian Orthodox Church. What you are seeing is Russia being essentially reborn as a hyper-nationalistic state that fights in the name of Russian Orthodox Christianity. And the end goal here is not just to restore Russia's greatness as a military and geopolitical power, it's to cause an identity crisis among Western Christians so that they look to Russia and they say to themselves, in order to win social conservative Christian issues, am I willing to shift my allegiance to Russia and look back on away from democratic freedoms in order to accomplish that? And is this also out of a response to Islam and the Muslim population growing in Russia? I think there's part of that. I think that Russia's disintegration morally, economically, militarily, by every measure, Russia is disintegrating, and it's very quickly changing. And that has led to hyper-nationalism and, quite frankly, a lot of resentment towards Muslims. Um, but I think this was bound to happen anyway. I think that radical Islam could be receding, and it could. if you were to wipe away radical Islam as a problem for Russia, this would be happening anyway, because the core issue here is that Putin has the KGB, Cold War era mentality that says, I want Russia to be the powerhouse of the world, but he views his version of Christianity as being the key to that. And so he's trying to put Russia on the same stage as the United States, and turn this into a contest for the future of the faith. And in that, he's highlighting elements of Marxism, as well as certain notions of populism. I say that only because when I hear Pat Buchanan speak on free trade and that kind of idea, I think that blends in. it. But what we are seeing is, as you've pointed out at brilliantly in your articles, by the way, which now the first one has been posted and there will be the second one posted post-interview. The idea here is to appeal to, the, would you say, evangelicals on a moral line and a class line in the sense of the appeal, uh, the economic appeal of Marxism. 
Right. Basically, the origins of this come during the Cold War when the KGB realized that they could not mount an intellectual offensive against Christianity and win. Christianity was something that they were going to have to deal with even within their own borders. Putin grew up as a Christian, even as he served the KGB. So they started promoting a pro-Russian Marxist version of Christianity called liberation theology in order to compete with pro-Western Christianity. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing the result of that today. And basically what it says is, is that free market, capitalism, democracy as the West practices it, are immoral and ultimately betray Christian values. And so what it holds is, is the idea that we need to scale back our freedom in order to preserve Christian values. So that's going, the, the overall objective is to reach Christians with this message that says Russia has figured out the balance between Christianity and social conservative values and democracy, whereas the West has not. And so for Christians that are upset with things like gay marriage, abortion, what Hollywood is up to, legitimate issues, he's hoping to prey upon their disappointment and say, look, there's another way, and I have it. Wow. And, and you identify, in, in essence, and you've mentioned the part of these, but it's the prong, three-prong approach. I can't help but think of Dana Carvey there, three prongs. But three-prong approach to the stool, if you will. Three. And one element of them that we are consumed with is the obvious geopolitical and military offensive. But you say we should be focused in more on the religious offensive because we're, we're, we're almost, I get the idea, just responding, reacting, and if we keep reacting and not identify what we stand for, not identify why pro-Western Christianity is the answer as opposed to the problem, we, we will be playing defense, and that plays right into... Vladimir Putin's hands. Right, and if Putin succeeds in winning over social conservatives, and if you look at his media, that's what they're aiming at. They're talking about the liberal media bias, bias in the United States against people like Sarah Palin. They're mm -hmm. actually saying that. Uh, and if they win with this pitch for social conservatives, as they've already won over Pat Buchanan, what happens is, is that Putin builds a fan base within the United States among Christians, that can essentially act as his lobby. And so that gives him a global fan base to influence the politics of the United States, as well as to shape the future of Christianity. That's basically what he's aiming for. And as an example of this, of his anti-freedom version of Christianity, Russia has passed what's essentially the Christian counterpart to Islamic blasphemy law, where you can now be prosecuted for mocking the faith. And for Christians in the United States that are upset with how people are seeing Christianity and the Bible as archaic, as a thing of the past, as a bunch of myths and falsehoods, there's going to be some that say, you know what, such a law is needed because people are turning their away from the faith. And I say this as a Christian, no, the answer is apologetic and becoming Amen. intellectual yourself, because that was, the, for me personally, that was the big component missing in my faith growing up, was this idea that you can be an intellectual dealing with evidence and documents and logic and a Christian at the same time. And, I, and in my personal experience, I've found churches to be lacking in that. It, it is interesting because in the article, you actually, while documenting the plan and the action and policies that he's put forth, the propaganda campaign of you, or the campaign if you will, the propaganda campaign, whatever. You expose the hypocrisy of Vladimir Putin, which is necessary, obviously. And you do it very well with documenting the human rights abuses. But this is about Putin counting on the fact of saying, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with these themes and tap into the upset, the anger, the frustration that so many Christians have, not only with the current state of the world, but 
the administration's response, the current administration's response to it, our president's response or lack thereof of identifying why pro-Western Christianity yields freedom and is far superior to societies that embrace uh, dictators and allow for subjugation of their citizens and the loss of liberty. So we, we, we see this happening, and, and you're saying, wait a second, at the same time you're documenting this, you're saying Putin doesn't follow what he ostensibly believes in. Ryan? Well, what Putin would argue, and I think you're going to hear this more and more often, is that Christianity is not necessarily democratic in the Western sense, and it's not necessarily capitalistic. The, he would argue that scaling back freedoms is not a contradiction of Christianity because it is necessary to scale back those freedoms in order to save Christianity. And so the choice he's putting forth for Christians, especially in the United States, is, is your allegiance going to be towards the West, which is more democratic but becoming less Christian, or will you shift your allegiance towards a country like Russia that is moving closer and closer to becoming essentially a dictatorship, but from a governmental standpoint, upholds Christian values? That's the choice that Putin is trying to put forth for Christians. You know, this also brings up the importance of one Ronald Wilson Reagan, of understanding what President Reagan did by identifying the evil empire. He wasn't playing defense. He was stating the truth and aggressively campaigning, and he understood the importance of that. We don't have that coming out of the administration. If you were to speak with President Obama, we pray for that to happen, by the way, Ryan. <laughs> and you, you go in, and he says, Ryan, tell me what you think. What, what should I do here? You, you've identified something my, my analysts weren't on. Of course, my analysts weren't on the Muslim Brotherhood, but I digress. Your thoughts? I would tell him to have two strategies. First, he has to obviously stand by our allies um, in Asia and in Europe, I, even with the understanding that, to be frank, we're not going to be able to save all, them all because we're not going to go to war to save Georgia or to save the Ukraine. But that doesn't mean that you don't sell them arms or put sanctions on high-level Russian officials. But that's the geopolitical strategy. Right. The actual political strategy has to be to confront Russia, not just for their aggression geopolitically, but for the human rights abuses, and especially for the mistreatment towards non-Russian Orthodox churches. And we have to bring together and make the case that Western democracy, even though it allows a lot of anti-Christian things to happen, is where Christians belong, and not in a country sliding towards a dictatorship like Russia. Because, and I've seen this happening for years, because Russia is a target of radical Islam, more and more people are saying, and it's logical for them to say this, well, then Russia is a natural ally. Then when you add on that Putin is out there acting visibly and vocally as a Christian, as many Christians want to see leaders act, then that, makes, that gives them a very compelling case for the Christian audience around the world. Ryan Morrow. He has been ahead of the game on so many things and also pointing things out, whether a president says something way back in 08 regarding the Middle East and how that translates into policies and how it has translated into policies, or we're looking at the situation right now with a series of articles, a two-part series. I'll post part two in just a moment. Ryan, this is a perspective that we need and we desire you also in the articles do a great job of saying okay well look at what he's doing here's the plan and breaking down particular countries uh where he is approaching and what he is looking to do i sincerely do pray that our president is listening and will start to engage in the way that you have recommended but keep up the great work people your twitter handle is what it's just my name. It's Ryan Morrow, M-A-U-R-O. See, that's, that's even something Crane Durham can remember. That's brilliant. <laughs> All right. Hey, buddy, sincerely, great work. Look forward to talking with you next week on this follow-up. But keep it up, and we will be posting it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Take Bye -bye. care. Really amazing. Check out the article, and 
We will have Hans von Spakowski on the flip side of the break, but stay tuned for American Family News. Before that, AFR Talk. AFR Talk.